Hey everyone, this is Theo from Headphones.com, and today I have a review of the 64 Audio U18S. This is a follow-up to the original U18T, which was released going on 5 years ago at this point. So it's been quite some time, and I think some people are really looking forward to the U18S. This unit was provided for review by Headphones.com, and as always, what follows are minus thoughts and opinions to the best of my ability. Let's get right into it. So presentation and accessory-wise, as usual, there's really not much to talk about with the 64 Audio IMs. Starting with the ear tips, they are now including this sort of like snowflake or spidey wheel to hold the ear tips. You have your True Fidelity ear tips in foam, the silicon ear tips, and they're also including spin fit ear tips as well, which is a nice touch. That's personally what I ran the U18S with when I was doing my critical listening. Over here, you have a sticker with some inspirational words on the bottom. That's pretty much all there is to it. This over here is their um, simulation leather case, and by the way, that's just marketing speak for fake leather. Um, it's a pretty sweet case. It would probably be even sweeter if it wasn't like, I think, $50 standalone. So, yeah, I digress. This is the cable that is going to come by default with the U18S now, and it is a massive jump in tactility over the, uh, the previous cable. The premium stock cable is what they called it, I think. Man, that thing was janky. Um, but yeah, big jump, although you still have the pesky memory wire on this model as well, which I have removed. And I'd probably recommend you do so as well if you have the uh, premium silver cable already. Moving on to the U18S itself, you can see that it sports a distinctly different shell from some of their older models. I want to say I measured the width at around 0.54 inches, whereas the older models were around 0.48 inches. This does mean it's a little bit more shaky in my ear, I guess. It doesn't fit quite as well, but for comfort, I didn't really have any issues, and um, I was able to wear it for hours on end. Moving on to the faceplate itself, it is pretty sweet. It's sporting milled indentations throughout, and I believe it's inspired by natural formations, or more closely rock formations in this respect. You guys know that I'm not too picky about this stuff, and honestly I think it strikes a great balance between being aesthetically pleasing and understated. Let's do some sound analysis. What you're looking at here is a frequency response graph of the U18S with the various Apex modules. These are essentially swappable modules with some pretty cool properties. Functionally, they slowly release air pressure to prevent listening fatigue, and they also control the amount of isolation you're getting. The other benefit here is that they inherently affect the bass frequencies, giving you some flexibility with the tuning. So you have your MX module, your M15 module, and your M20 module respectively. Just to get this out of the way, the U18S sounds nothing like the U18T. In fact, it most closely resembles 64 Audio's own U12T in terms of tonal balance. As you might expect with 64 Audio, you have a very solid bass tuning. I would say that the U18S leans towards the better end of balanced armature bass. It is very tight with solid detail, and surprisingly, I would say it actually has pretty good texture for balance armature bass. Where it falls short, more expectedly, is in slam and timbre. It's just not the most organic listen, and you're not going to get bass head levels of bass here. I do find myself gravitating towards the M15 module, for reasons I'll dive into shortly, but just know that it's not necessarily because it's my desired bass quantity. The mid-range is very solid as well. It is pretty much dead neutral, although you can sort of expect vocals to hang further back in general. This is compounded by the peanut compensation, which is pretty relaxed. In fact, I think I would say it's a little too relaxed, and it lends to some dullness to my ears. Ultimately, this mid-range is just super duper safe, and I think someone would be hard pressed to call it bad. Unfortunately though, the treble is where the U18S stumbles to my ears. It sounds fairly linear, going from 5 to 10k Hz, but the amplitude, the quantity, is not quite what I would call ideal. This is exacerbated by the strong dip after 10k Hz, before the U18S rises for air at roughly 16k Hz. So yeah, in case anyone is wondering, this spike here is not a measurement artifact, and it's a product of the TIA driver being used in their IMs. Basically what this comes down to, at least for me, is that the U18S is too dark with the M20 module, but then the cheer zing is borderline fatiguing with the MX and M15 modules to my ears. All this to say that the U18S is not rolled off, but rather that most people will have to use either the MX or the M15 module if they want to get sufficient trouble air. Let's talk about technicalities, and to lend some context to where I'm coming from, I do want to take a step back and go back to the U18T. The U18T, despite its sporting 18 balanced armature drivers, I really just did not find it to be a particularly detailed IM. It was good, but it really just didn't play ball with some of 64 Audio's other stuff, like the Tia Forte or even the Tia Trio. I really did find those IMs to be more detailed. Thankfully, this does not hold true for the U18S. The U18S is an extremely detailed IM, enough to play near the top of the IM game. I would say that in general, notes on it lean a little bit more textured, a little bit more gritty in the decay. I would not say that notes have a sort of wetness to them like the Tia Forte exhibits, but what this effectively does is it does create some micro detail in the sense that you can sort of pick up the trailing end of consonants on a lot of uh, instruments. 
Oh yeah, and the other thing that immediately stands out about the U18S is its imaging performance. Like most of the 64 audio IMs, that sort of dip after 10k Hz contrasted to the peak at around 15 or 16k Hz, it lends to some very unique treble reverb, and by extension the way this sort of stage is imaged around the listener. Just to be clear, I would not say that this is a 3D holographic presentation, like the Tia Trio or the Tia Forte. The U18S images a whole lot more similarly to the U12T. And to this end, it has really good positional accuracy, and I would say that I hear quite a bit of that sort of blackness of background. And when I say blackness of background, I am most closely talking about the sort of phenomenon where instruments sort of pop and sink into the sound stage. This definitely has quite a bit to do with noise floor, but at the same time, I also think it has something to do with the treble contrast that I just talked about. So the biggest weakness that I would outline about the U18S from a technical standpoint would be its dynamic range. And when I say dynamic range, I am most closely talking about an IM's ability to scale decibel gradations in a given track. The U18S has something of a downwards compression to the way it rides dynamic swings. In this sense, parts of tracks that should be louder sound quieter than they should. And in turn, there is a sense of, or rather lack of engagement to the U18S that sort of makes it feel like you are, I don't know, sort of watching the track unfold in front of you. It's a more analytical presentation in general, and it's not one of those IMs that's going to sort of put you into the music. Um, or at least that's the way I perceive it. Alright, so all that's left to do is to talk conclusions and for me to give an assessment of value. The U18S is a terrific IM. It has been well tuned and it is a very technical IM in general. I really do think 64 Audio has succeeded in the sense that they have created a sort of yin to the yang that was the U18T. At the same time though, I do have to consider context. 64 Audio is distinctive to me at least as being one of the finest IM companies in the world. And because of that, I'm going to hold them to a higher standard. The U18S's competition, it doesn't lie with the U18T so much as it does the U12T, which has been tuned very similarly. Here I have to ask myself, is the U18S better than the U12T? And the short answer is no, at least not strictly. The U12T to my ears has a more pleasing tuning, and while it might not match the U18S's sheer detour retrieval or layering chops, for a sense of intangible synergy and refinement, I really do think it's on another level relative to the U18S. And stack on the fact that the U12T is only $1,000 cheaper, and the U18S just becomes a very difficult recommendation. You guys know that I value transparency above all else, and I'm just going to say that unless someone wants a darker, more relaxed U12T, which is pretty relaxed in its own right, the U18S is going to be a hard upsell, and I'm hard pressed to recommend it in general. Again, I do want to stress that the U18S is a very good IM in isolation. It's more so circumscribed by the circumstances surrounding its release. As always though, I hope you guys found this video review informative and I will catch you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.